Today I'm looking at another gimbal. Yep, there are a lot of gimbals on the market. And this one is for really any kind of camera, including smartphones. Learn how to turn your smartphone into a professional quality video camera. Be sure to check out our mobile filmmaking courses, master the Filmic Pro app, and learn about smartphone video and cinematography. And also don't forget, we have a companion filmmaking podcast. Links are in the description. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun here, and today I am looking at the Moza Aircross 2. This is what I would consider in that big boy gimbal category. You could put pretty much any kind of prosumer camera on this, including, I would say, all DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. The bigger cinema cameras, not so much, although this will fly a Blackmagic Pocket 4K or the 6K version, depending on the lens you put on it. You can't put really big glass on the front. So in this video, I'm just gonna talk about the things I really like about this gimbal, the few things I don't like. Spoiler alert, there's not many. And then show some footage I shot with a variety of different cameras. So what I really like about this gimbal is it's easy to mount and balance. Got a cool auto-tune feature that I like. It's a calibration feature. It reminds me a lot of the Movi. Go under gimbal, motor, power, and auto-tune. And then the camera is going to shake and vibrate as it figures out the tuning. and it's tuned. It also has this cool balance check feature. Go to advanced, balance check. And so two of them are balanced and one needs to be adjusted. You've got these red lock switches on here that make it really easy to transport and there's three of them on each axis. So it's great when you want to throw it in the car, you don't want to disassemble the whole rig. I personally don't do a lot of vertical shooting, but if you want to, it's easy to switch between vertical and horizontal landscape and portrait. This L bracket makes that possible. And you can do that with traditional cameras too, not just smartphones. Sony a6400 with a wooden camera cage. The battery doubles as the hand grip, but it is removable. And fully charged, it will last up to 12 hours. Now, if you're using the gimbal a lot during that day, you'll probably get about seven or so hours of use. I only have the one battery, but if you were shooting a lot, you could pick up a second one and then replace it as the day went on. Although this will charge with an external pack via USB-C while you're shooting. And the battery takes about 90 minutes to fully charge. All right, so I had completely planned on shooting some beauty B-roll, more than just test footage inside my office, but hey, we got a nasty rainy day here, so. The overall build quality of this gimbal is excellent. And it has a payload capacity of approximately seven pounds. So you can put a lot of different kind of cameras on this. And one thing that you hope from every gimbal, and that is to get smooth footage. And I have to say this one was smooth for me right out of the box. 
A lot of gimbals take a little bit of practice to get smooth footage, but not with this one. I've had the best luck with this one out of any of the recent gimbals I've tested. So the Moza Master app is easy to connect and use. You just find the device, AirCross 2, connect. I've got Bluetooth turned on. You hit enter, you see your battery level. Then you have a remote control, the gimbal settings. You can update your firmware, which is great. And you've got different modes like this mimic mode, which is really interesting. But the remote control works very well. You can set the speed and I turned them down because they can be really aggressive and really fast. Just depends on what you're trying to do though. Remote control is good if someone's controlling the gimbal and then you are walking behind them and aiming at where you want it to shoot. Or, you know, that's one way to do it. There's a lot of different ways to use the remote control. You got a recenter button, puts it back to the standard shooting mode, and then you got selfie. You can go back to the recenter. And this mimic motion is pretty interesting. So what it does is it will mimic the way you move the phone. So whichever way I'm moving the phone, you can see the gimbal is mimicking my actions. So it's like another way to do remote control. You've got other modes in here. You've got FPV inception mode where you can, the gimbal goes into a flashlight mode and then it'll do 360 or 180 spins and then sport mode. And then the other thing, using the Moza app, you can do object tracking. So using object tracking, you actually mount a smartphone on top. So you could use it with any kind of camera and then it will track an object. You lock it on and then you could walk around, you could do whatever, you could track a traditional object or a face, what have you. You can also do fixed point time-lapse, motion time-lapse, panoramas. You got a lot of different things. This is similar to the smartphone version, but this is just more advanced. Really, there's very few negatives to this gimbal. The main one would be that it's promoted as a lightweight gimbal and the gimbal by itself is lightweight. But once you load it up with the different mounts and with the different accessories, it gets pretty heavy and it is a big bulky gimbal. It's not as heavy as like a Ronin S, but using two hands is probably not a bad idea. This is heavy. It's heavy, it's definitely a heavy gimbal. Even with a smartphone, this is a pretty heavy rig. And the other thing would be, and this isn't really a negative, it's just a word of advice. If you are a smartphone only shooter, then this gimbal is probably overkill for you. Unless you like to rig it up with cages and lenses and perhaps a depth of field adapter like from B-Script. This is a gimbal that you can really put any kind of accessory on your phone and it will handle it. This is definitely a professional grade gimbal. If you're looking to step up your game from a smartphone gimbal, or if you have other kinds of cameras, then this gimbal really could be a good investment. I like this gimbal a lot, and I'm probably gonna start using this more often. I just need to hit the gym though, you know? My arms are kinda sore. Oh, and some of this cool B-roll of the actual gimbal here, I shot with an Edelkrone motion control head on a slider and I used a Canon C200 shooting this B-roll. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Had to pull out the old tennis elbow brace. That thing is really heavy.